I yield the floor. Senator from Maryland is recognized. President, I too join with my colleagues who rise to express my deep and heartfelt condolences uh, to the people of Poland tragic loss. I thank uh, my colleague Senator Durbin for organizing this and joined by Senator Johans of Nebraska. As one who notes the Senate floor today, you see that we stand here not as Democrats and not as Republicans, but as Americans who want to extend our, our heartfelt sympathy uh, to the people of Poland. I thank my colleague uh, for organizing uh, this resolution and for all of his efforts in support of Poland uh, from the years of trying to get the truth out about the Cadian Forest to his very able and unstinting efforts to bring Poland into NATO and to advance uh, Polish democracy. So I thank him. Mr. President, I rise here today as a granddaughter of a woman who came from Poland uh, over 100 years ago when women didn't even have the right to vote. When she got off of that boat in Fells Point in Baltimore, uh, she was a 16-year-old girl in search of the American dream. Little did she dream that less than 100 years later, her daughter, would, her great-granddaughter, would stand on the floor of the United States Senate, advocating for democracy in Poland, righting the wrongs of World War II. And little did I realize, with the great honor the people of Maryland have given me, that I would stand on the floor of the Senate and express sympathy at this tragedy of unimaginable magnitude. Poland has suffered a loss where the wounds might not ever heal. The facts are now well known. Poland lost their president, Lech Kaczynski, a great leader with a lifetime of service to his country. The Polish people lost their first lady, Maria, beloved uh, by the people and her good deeds. More than 90 other dedicated Polish patriots perished that terrible Saturday morning. Uh, esteemed and decorated military officers, the equivalent of their joint chiefs, experienced diplomats, elected leaders, the head of their central bank, and citizens who had put their lives on the line for Poland. All were Polish patriots. My heart weeps for the terrible, terrible loss and for the people of Poland. We know the terrible story, the Katyn massacre that brought them to this site, this unbelievable site for the last 70 years saturated with incredible melancholy. In the spring of 1940, the Soviet secret police executed over 20,000 Polish prisoners of war. 20,000 Polish military officers. And then there were other intellectuals from law, from science, from medicine. A whole generation of Polish patriots and leaders were murdered in that terrible, terrible place. People who died for Polish freedom. And part of the Stalin's effort to destroy the Polish people was to destroy its leaders. The Nazis then continued where, what Stalin had begun. And then the world, after a brutal war, the terrible death camps at Yalta and Potsdam, the West abandoned Poland, and Poland, against its will, was forced behind the Iron Curtain. But what do we know about the Polish people? Their nation never dies, because their nation does live not only in a government, not only now under a rule of a constitution that is serving them so well at this troubled time, but Poland lived within the hearts of its people. And no massacre, no Iron Curtain could ever take it away from them. During those dark years of, uh, when Poland continued to be under Soviet domination, for those who fought, who worked 
to tell the story of what happened at Katim. Joining with my colleagues in the Congress, I fought for many years to release the information about that horrific massacre, even contacting President Gorbachev to be part of his glasnost and perestroika to at least release all of the information. Finally, in 1990, they began to do it. But it was only now, last Wednesday, one week ago, in the site where the massacre occurred, the Prime Minister of Poland, Mr. Tusk, with Mr. Putin met in that forest where Putin issued an apology to the Polish people and said all information and archives would be open. We were so filled with joy. It was a time of great reconciliation. And that's what Saturday was about. It was the continuation of a great and grand reconciliation between these nations with President Kaczynski traveling to bring the leadership there. And the leadership were people who had been trailblazers. Mr. Kaczynski himself had been a member of Solidarity. His wife strongly beside his, uh, at his side. And now, as he was president of Poland, forging new relationships, mending the wounds with the Jewish community, it was a time of Polish leadership reaching out to the world in efforts of reconciliation, and in this case, Russia reached back. One of the people who died was Anna Valentinovich. She was, in many ways, the Rosa Parks of the Solidarity Movement. She was a crane operator in the Gdansk shipyard. They fired her for trying to organize a union. And when Anna stood up, so did Lech Wałęsa. And Solidarity was born. And when he leapt over that wall, he took the whole world with him. And now, down came, after years of martial law and occupation, we had Solidarity and then ultimately a free Poland. At this time of great tragedy, as we honor those who died in the forest in 1940 and those who died in the forest just on Saturday, we can see that hopefully some good would come out of this. It's been a triple tragedy. The massacre of 1940, the cover-up by the Soviet Union, and now the Saturday airplane crash. But out of this, we would hope, would come a new sense of cooperation. I want to acknowledge that the Russian government has been working with the Polish government to recover the bodies and send them home with dignity and honor. Their promises of a complete investigation seem to be unfolding, and they've invited Polish officials to join with them side by side. We hope that out of this tragedy might further come other acts of great reconciliation. And that's what we need to think about, how Poland and continues to move the world to peace and to reconciliation. I want to acknowledge the people from Poland and what they did for the United States. Pulaski helped fight in their revolution. Kosciuszko built West Point, was the one of the architects of the American Revolution. And when he went to help Poland be free, he left money with Thomas Jefferson to fight for the abolition of slavery. Through all of the wars, Poland has always been on the side of the West. During World War II, those who would escape from Poland led the armies in exile. They were at Monte Cassino. They flew in the Kosciuszko Squadron with the RAF. They have been at our side in Iraq and Afghanistan. Wherever there is a fight to be made for freedom, the Poles are there. And they need to know when they make those fights, the states of America are with them. For so for those who died on Saturday in that terrible melon forest, our hearts go with them. But the people of Poland, we express our sympathy, but we also express our pride in their stalwart, unrelenting, unflinching commitment to peace and justice in their own country and in the world. Mr. President, I yield the floor. The Senator from Illinois is Mr. President, I want to thank the Senator from Maryland. Uh, she is um, proud Polish heritage. And when she spoke of her grandmother coming to